appreciate it. All right, guys. Dante, 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 Dante. All right. I was gonna ask you who was gonna win, but I don't have to ask now. What's up, man? What's up, what's up, y'all? All right, y'all. All right. Man, my man, my man. Dante's Box Nation, what's going on guys? So today at the press conference, Canelo versus Danny Jacobs in New York, Danny Jacobs, he says something that stood out. He compared himself to Golovkin, and he said, Golovkin was bigger than Canelo. He said, I'm bigger than Golovkin. So with Danny saying that, he clearly feels that he has a size advantage going into this fight. Something else I just thought about when I was saying that is, I notice now, when Danny Jacobs fought against Golovkin, he didn't predict a knockout, but he's predicting a knockout against Canelo Alvarez. Now, it could be because he really does think he's just so much bigger and stronger than Canelo, he could possibly think this guy's just too small. He could also be thinking that if the fight goes 12 rounds, he knows, especially if it's competitive, once again, even if Danny Jacobs is up in the fight, but it's close, he knows he most likely won't get the decision. So it could possibly be both. But whatever the reason Danny Jacobs said that or feels this way, we have to remember Canelo Alvarez, he's already fought against bigger opponents. Remember he fought against Julio Cesar Chavez Jr. and he just fought Rocky Fielding at 168. Matter of fact, Danny, he was asked to give his thoughts on Canelo moving up in weight to fight against the bigger Rocky Fielding. And he simply said, Rocky Fielding, he was big, but he does not possess my skills. We know that's the reason why Canelo took a fight against a Rocky Fielding instead of moving up to 168 to fight like a Caleb Smith or a David Benavidez. But speaking of Caleb Smith, Caleb had already knocked out Rocky Fielding in the first round. So yeah, it's a big difference with Canelo going up against a bigger Danny Jacobs. This is the reason why Canelo put on the rehydration clause, but for Danny Jacobs or Team Jacobs, they feel that that benefits them just as much as it benefits Canelo Alvarez. Do you guys recall how big Canelo looked when he went up against Miguel Cotto and Amir Khan? Amir Khan will say after the fight that he believes Canelo rehydrated to about 180 pounds in that fight. But going back to the rehydration clause, this is not the first time that Danny Jacobs had to do a rehydration clause because he said today that he had to do a rehydration clause in his last fight against Sergey Derenyevchenko as well. So I don't believe that either fighter really has an advantage when it comes to the rehydration clause. We'll see how it turns out May 4th or how the fight turns out. That's all I got for now, guys. I'm on to the next one. Take your striking game to the next level with the Focus Ball. Dramatically improved footwork, timing, accuracy, reflex, head movement, and striking technique. Train every time, everywhere with the Focus Ball.